In this quick photo P project, we're going to be creating a paper cutout. We've provided you with a file, so you'll do a file open, and you'll download the exercise file, which is paper cutout. And in this document, we already have some objects. So you're not going to be creating anything, we're just going to be using them to build the effect of paper cutout with drop shadows and texture. So we have a dolphin polygon and then two waves and if we turn these on and off you could see how this is constructed and then we have a background color as well so the first thing we're going to do is work on the dolphin and we're going to apply a layer effect so at the very bottom we have a layer style the EFF and we're going to do a color overlay this will open up our layer style color overlay will be checked on and our dolphin needs to be gray so under the color swatch we'll click once and we'll pick a color gray anything is good next we want to add a drop shadow we could do this by closing and going back to the EFF or if we come down and click on drop shadow it will turn it on and right now our default angle is 90 degrees we're going to leave the opacity where it is, around 57, 60%. Distance, we're going to leave at 27. But let's change the angle to about 130. We can also type that in if needed. 130. The distance is pretty good. If we wanted to, we can always bring it in a little, bring it out some more. Whatever you feel like doing. We're going to leave our spread and size alone, because I like the drop shadow the way it is. And I'm going to hit OK. So we now have our gray dolphin, and we've added depth by putting the drop shadow. So the next thing is the polygon. I'm going to select it under the layers. And the colors we're going to leave, um, kind of want the ocean look here colors the ocean but we'll do a layer effect in this case we're going to do a drop shadow again and that adds the drop shadow this time I'm going to make the distance a little bit a bit more around 25 26 we'll add a little bit of a spread and the size I'm going to go a little bit to that's the feathered edge you can see here it's not as hard If we want to change the color of this, we can add a color overlay. And we have to select color overlay. And I'll pick a blue or another color in here. It's up to you if you want to. Or you can leave it the color we had. If you don't like the color, you can always turn on and off the checkbox. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to open up my layer styles here, the little arrow to the right. And it shows we have a color overlay and a drop shadow. Well, we can actually add another effect here if we want to. If you double click on effects, it will reopen it. And I could put a stroke on it. You do have to select it. You can see the stroke here. I'm going to make it around 15, and I'm going to do inside. And for the color, I'm going to pick another blue. Something similar. Not too much of a difference. I just want it to be subtle. So you can see here it's not jumping out. I'll hit OK. I now have three effects on this. So I'm going to close it up. I'm going to go to my Wave 2. And I'm going to do a Drop Shadow. And you can see now, because this shape is really the outside and the center is, you can see over here, is transparent, we get the Drop Shadow on the inside. So it looks like a paper cutout and there's depth to it. So yeah, I'll bring the distance down just a little bit. I'll bring the opacity up 
so it's a darker drop shadow. Angle's fine at 130. It is using the global angle. If you want a different angle, you have to turn off the global. Otherwise, you'll affect all the drop shadows, and then you can change it. But you have to turn off the global first. Otherwise, watch what happens with the drop shadow on the dolphin. They all move. So if you want only this one to change, you have to turn off the global angle and move it. So I'm happy with that. And if you want to just reuse this effect, if you hold the control key down or command key on the Mac and drag, If you want to reuse the effect and keep it with this wave, but use it on wave two, you can hold down the Alt key, click and drag, and it will apply it. You can see it applied it to the next one. Or I can undo, and I can manually do it as well, using the EF, the layer style. I can do my drop shadow and I'll leave it because I want these two to match and we'll hit OK. Now I want to add a texture to the overall layout not just each one but all the way through make it look like paper kind of a rough paper texture so I'm gonna select dolphin and down at the bottom next to the layer style we have our new adjustment layer. I'm going to click once and make sure you have that dolphin selected at the very top. We'll click once down here on new layer adjustment and we're going to do a color fill. That filled it with red, a little bright, so if you click on the swatch, I double clicked and then I can change this to a gray any gray will do. And I'll hit OK. Now we're going to apply a filter. Before we do that, I'm going to right click on the color fill and we're going to convert to smart object. Then, after converting it, I'm going to go under filter, we're going to go to noise, and we're going to add noise. And you can see it adds kind of that television fuzz noise that's in color. I'm going to go to monochromatic. That'll make it black and white. If you move up, you can see you can add a lot, which is way too much. We want to be down around 20%, 25%. It gives you a preview of it. We'll hit OK. And you'll see we have a color fill with a smart filter on it. I can always turn that filter off if needed. But now I want it to apply to everything below. So I'm going to click on normal. I'm going to go down to soft light. And you can see, even in the drop shadow, it added kind of that paper look to it. Uh, it's a pattern. It's a, it's a nice texture. And if we zoom in, you can actually see the texture and pattern here. I'll turn it off, turn it on. It's even all the way through. And we have, I'm holding down the Alt key to zoom out, our paper cutout. So make sure you save this as a PSD first. That will download it to your downloads folder. Then we're going to do a file export as, in this case, JPEG. So this is our layout. I'm going to change the width to 1000 just to make it a little bit smaller. And I'll click Save. And we finished our paper cutout.